So, you know, uh, you go back to the, I don't know if you read uh, philosophy, especially Hindu philosophy and stuff. So they, they actually, it's amazing. They probably were way ahead of what we are today. We just have lost a lot of the knowledge and the wisdom that they had in those days and that they taught, which they don't teach us today because we don't go to those gurukuls or whatever they call them. They said that after you're dead and gone, all you leave behind are your children and your reputation. That's all I want to be remembered for. Right? So that's all you leave behind. There's nothing else you leave behind, really, that people will remember you for. Right? And so, technically, it's my children. That's what they'll remember me. And that's how they'll see me after I'm gone. And, uh, you know, what, what they'll say behind my back when I'm not there. That's really... So, you know, that's all I think they'll remember me for. My name is Arjun Malhotra. I'm, well, I'm an electronics engineer from IIT Kharagpur. Did my bachelor's in electronics and electrical communication engineering. I basically born in Calcutta, grew up in Calcutta and New Delhi. I did my schooling, my initial years at Columbus in Delhi and then uh, my last four years at the Doon School in Dehradun. Uh, went to IIT Kharagpur, which is near Calcutta. Uh, and then joined DCM as a senior management trainee, five years in DCM. Uh, and then left with a group of friends uh, who worked with me in DCM in 1975. And uh, started a company called Hindustan Computers Limited, which uh, you all today probably know as HCL. It's, uh, it's pretty big now, it's about 100,000 people, a little over eight and a half billion in revenue. Uh, one of the largest uh, IT services companies in India and probably the largest uh, hardware company in India. Uh, left them when I turned about, when I turned 49.50 in 98 and uh, thought I'd retire. Didn't really work out, it lasted 10 days. I got thrown out of the house by my wife who basically said that she married me for, well, she said we've been married for 27 years. I married you for good or bad, but I didn't marry you for lunch. So basically go and work from a business center, don't try and work from home, this house is run without you, kind of thing. And so I ended up starting another company uh, called Techspan, which we merged uh, into, an, uh, into Headstrong and uh, ended up selling it for 550 million to Genpact in 2011. And I thought I'd retire, I'd now turned 60. Uh, I thought I'd retire again, and that's lasted about four years, and I'm now thinking of starting another one, which I hope we'll do by March of 2015. Uh, when we started the company, uh, we really thought that microprocessors were gonna change the world. And uh, really, uh, what happened was, uh, IBM and ICL at that time were selling pretty old technology in India and uh, DCM had the new technology but because India was a kind of a socialist country we had an act called the Monopolies and Restrictive Trade Practices Act large companies were not large private companies were sort of restricted from going into new areas uh, DCM was the fourth largest private sector company in the country at that time and while we had made calculators and we had made uh, programmable calculators, uh, they felt that going into computers was a completely different area. Uh, we thought, and most of us who were in that division or department, whatever you called it in the company at that time, uh, felt that the step from programmable calculators to microprocessor-based computers was a natural progression. And that uh, if DCM felt that they didn't want to get into it, uh, you know, they were missing out on s something that was going to change the world. So we just felt strongly that this technology was going to change the world. And uh, if they didn't want to do it, we would do it on our own. It was pure bravado. I mean, I, we didn't have the money, we didn't have a business plan. We just thought we knew the technology and we knew the market because we'd been selling the stuff. And so we stepped out and said, hey, let's do it. Uh, we didn't have a single understanding about we needed licenses and you know how to go about it uh, you know I, I, I don't know I think fortune favors the brave what happened was when we stepped out uh, there was a TV company called Televista who had tried to get into calculators without success 
uh, Ved Luther, who ran it, uh, came to us and said, hey, I don't know how to sell calculators. I've got a factory. If I manufacture it and give it to you, will you guys sell it and we'll split the profit down the middle? And so we had a production line that was given to us, offices that were given to us. He said, work out of my offices around the country. And, uh, you know, so we got into trading calculators, something that we knew and that we had established DCM. They were the largest in the country. So we had a cash flow. We invested in developing computers. And, uh, you know, when we had a microprocessor based computer ready, uh, we discovered that we needed a manufacturing license to manufacture them in India. We just couldn't make them. And manufacturing was, uh, was sort of limited or restricted to only state and public sector. And at that time, the UP Electronics Corporation came to us and said, would you like to do a joint sector with us? And so that's how we got into, that's how the name Hindustan Computers. So everything sort of fell in place. It's like, you know, if we had tried to do it on our own, I mean, if we had known all these restrictions, we never would have started. It's just that you learned as you went along. And, uh, you know, the, the funniest story was when we made our computer, uh, we were, you know, we used to take 30% advance, which covered our bill of materials in those days, and 70% when we were ready to deliver. So our first customer gave us the check for the 70%, and uh, we were ready to deliver. We made the whole process, the fanfare, he was going to come to the factory, you know, all that stuff. When someone told us, hey, have you paid your excise? And we said, what the hell is excise? And he said, do you know there's a production tax you have to pay in India before you ship? And so we called the excise inspector and said, you know, what is this excise? So he said, he gave us a manual and said, you know, you have to pay excise as per the manual. So we said, you tell us. So he looked through the whole manual and there was no microprocessor based microcomputer. There was nothing specified. So we said, hey, do I pay it ad volarum, which is as a percentage of my selling price? Or do I pay it by weight? Big transformers were paid four annas per kilogram by weight, you know, how do I pay my excise? So he said, look, you'll have to find a classification. And the way it works is you'll have to go to your administrative ministry and they will have to write a letter to the finance ministry. And then the finance ministry will have to give a classification and tell us how. We told him, you crazy, this will take many months. You know, I'm ready to ship. So he said, no, no, it won't take many months because it's revenue generating for the government. It'll take one day. So the Department of Electronics had just been opened. And so we went to the Department of Electronics. I still remember it was a Saturday. Government used to work half day Saturdays in those days. And we did a presentation, told them this is our problem, you know, and Department of Electronics is open because electronics was supposed to be the future for India. And so they listened to us. And then they told us that the microprocessor policy has still not been decided. It's expected to take four years. So please come back four years later and then we'll issue a notification. So we sort of went back and said, what's going on here? You know, we've got our machine ready and you know, all that kind of stuff. So all of us took the excise manual home and you know, very depressed said, what do we do? So said, hey, let's look at the manual. Maybe we'll find something. So India had, uh, because of our foreign exchange shortages, we used to be very aggressive on import substitution. So anything that was imported, you put it in your manual so that hopefully someone will make it and you could. So while going through the manual, we came across this picture of this East German accounting invoicing machine, electromechanical, Robotron was the manufacturer. And there, there was a photograph which had a display, a single line display, had a keyboard and had a printer. Okay, and that's exactly what our machine looked like. So we actually took it to the excise guy and said, look, it's an accounting invoicing machine. That's what it is. And so for four years, we actually invoiced, excised our machine out as an accounting invoicing machine, even sold one to the Department of Electronics, right? And the policy took four years to come out, the microprocessor policy. That's the environment in which we made computers in that's India. Amazing.